Good morning, Lighthouse, and Merry Christmas. We're so glad you're joining us on this very special Christmas service. We've never celebrated a Christmas quite like this before. Um, I hesitate to call it a COVID Christmas, but I guess that's what it is. But anyhow, we're together this morning and we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to have a great time together singing, worshiping, a special message. We have uh, Christmas scriptures from the Sunday School kids. We have a special Christmas song from a variety of people, a time of worship and some Christmas uh, remembrances as well. So join us this morning, enter in as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the story of how Jesus was born from Matthew and Luke. The birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. His mother Mary had been promised to Joseph in marriage, that before they were married, Mary realized that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the marriage agreement with her secretly. Joseph had this in mind when an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said to him, Joseph, a descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. She, 21, she will give birth to a son, and you, will name, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save pe his people from their, their sins. At that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census of the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All the people went to register in the cities where their ancestors had lived. Because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judah because David had been born there. Joseph went there to register with Mary because she was engaged to him. She was now very pregnant. While they were in Bethlehem, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That night, shepherds were in the fields near Bethlehem, watching over their sheep during the night. Suddenly, an angel from the Lord appeared to them. The glory of the Lord filled the area of light, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I come with good news for you, a message that will fill everyone with joy. Today your Savior Christ the Lord was born in David City. This is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in the manger. Suddenly a very large group of angels joined the angel and filled the sky. They were praising God by saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those who have his favor. The angels left them and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem and see what the Lord has told us about. And quickly and found Mary and Joseph with the baby who was lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Mary treasured all these things in her heart and always thought about them. As the shepherds returned to their flock, they glorified and praised God for everything they had seen and heard. Everything happened the way the angel had told them. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea when Herod was king. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem. They asked, where is the one who was born to be king of the Jews? 
We saw his star rising and have come to worship him. After the attack with King Herod, they started out. The star they had seen rising led them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were overwhelmed with joy to see the star. When they entered the house, they saw the child and with his mother Mary. So they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is how Jesus was born. Everything happened just as the prophet and angel said. My Good morning, Lighthouse. I was here in Hong Kong since 1974. Every December, I have lots of commitments. The Philippine tradition, we celebrate during Christmas Eve. But because of my work, we just celebrate on Christmas Day. We pray together, eat together. Suddenly, COVID came. I lost my job. During this time of pandemic, I saw the glory of God. He provided everything we needed in life. He never left us nor forsake us. Because of COVID, I can pray together with my family. Today, our Savior is born. He fulfilled His great promises. So let us embrace each other together. Good news from heaven, the angel bring. Glad tidings to the earth they sing. To us, the day a child is given to crown us with the joy of heaven. And lastly, faith makes things possible. Hope makes all things work. Love makes all things beautiful. May we have all three for this Christmas. Faith, hope, and love. Merry Christmas, everyone, and God bless. What a crazy year it's been. That's what Mary and Joseph must have thought as they looked down at God's precious gift to them. A gift not only to them, but to the whole world. One of my favorite Christmas memories is of Christmas Eve. After we've returned home from the Christmas program, after we've had the lovely dinner my mom has prepared, we would sit together as a family and my dad would read to us the Christmas story out of Luke 2. It's an amazing story of hope. Uh, shepherds hearing this great news proclaimed by angels. And it's that hope that I hope that you will find this Christmas in Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 says, Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They shall name him Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hello, brothers and sisters of Lighthouse. 2020 has been a very challenging year. For most of us, and for some of us, it has been even harder. We lost loved ones. I lost my dad. And if you would allow me to say, Christmas will never be the same. But probably I will be wrong. Because Christmas is not about my dad being alive. Or my dad not being alive. It's about Christ. The birth of Christ. For unto us... A child was born, and unto us a child was given. Recently I heard about cancellation of Christmas in some cities or in some countries. 
It's traditions that have been cancelled, I believe, not Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas is about the birth of Christ. And if we receive Christ in our lives, in our hearts, and we believe that he's our Lord and Savior, that cannot be cancelled. That cannot be restricted. Yes, you can take the traditions, the going out and having fun or doing sharing. Those can be restricted. So I'm glad that I have Christ in me and I'm a child of God. You know, growing up with my dad, it was about, Christmas was about giving. It was about community. It was about bringing people who do not have the opportunity or who do not have the facility that probably we had and share with them. And that was what Christmas meant to him. He loved people. And that's the tradition I want to continue with. I've resolved with my siblings to continue with that tradition and let people be blessed. And this is a challenge to us as Christians. Let's go out and bless others, especially those who are not believers, those who do not profess the faith. I wish you a Merry Christmas and God bless you. We're having a great time together this morning on this special Christmas Day service. And now we invite you to enter into worship with us. Stephen is coming. He's going to lead us in some really wonderful Christmas songs as we worship the newborn king, the promised one who has come. Amen. Amen. Stephen? And Panina. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I hope you have uh, so far had a good time, have you had a good breakfast, and uh, perhaps you haven't eaten uh, too much um, uh, as we celebrate. Uh, I, I know uh, we've been looking uh, forward to, to good food and, and gifts and, and laughter. Um, but we are so very aware of what is going uh, on around the world. Um, we are in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, some of us have loved ones who are suffering um, because of the pandemic. Uh, some of us have lost loved ones. And some of us may even be uh, in poor health uh, at this moment. But in all this, we know that God is in control, and we know that God loves us, and, and he's here with us to remind us of his love and his faithfulness and his goodness. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we read, we've already had a few scriptures this morning uh, concerning the birth of our Lord and Savior. I would like us to, again, remind ourselves um, of this story in Luke 1, and I'm reading from uh, the story of Zechariah. Um, and here he says, what well, the Bible says, and his father, that's John's father, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us. And on in verse 70, he says, As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies. And we know that our enemy, me, me, enemy number one is the devil. The Bible says Jesus has come to save us and rescue us from our enemy. Hallelujah. As Simeon in Luke 2 says, and again the Bible says, full of the Holy Spirit, said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has prepared revelation a light that gives us revelation 
as Gentiles. And so Hallelujah. My eyes have seen your salvation. May God fill us with his Holy Spirit this Christmas season that we might see who Jesus is, what he has come to do and accomplish in us and through us. Hallelujah. As we read last Sunday, there is the um, angel uh, came and a multitude of the heavenly host came praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Can we stand up together and begin to praise and worship this King of kings and Lord of lords? Father, we thank you so much this morning. We say happy birthday to Jesus. But as uh, one of the songs we sing uh, during Christmas time says, Jesus, be born in me today. Jesus, be born in us today. We welcome you in our lives. We renew our commitment to you, God. Our God, our Father, our Lord and Master, our Shepherd. We are yours and we belong to you. And today, whatever goes on around us, whatever is happening, we want to focus and fix our gaze on you, God. Receive our praise, receive our worship, receive us. God, we give you our lives, we give you who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains will reply, echoing the joyous praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are
the blind man and his riches for the poor, friendship for the one the world ignores. Hallelujah. He is our rescuer. He is our redeemer. He is our Christ, our Messiah. We give you all the glory, all the honor that is due your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh,
adore you, we worship you, we, down, we bow down before you and we humble ourselves before you, God. You are God, and there's no one like you. You alone is holy, worthy. Worthy, worthy is you, God Almighty. Hallelujah.
Just think with me that night when Jesus was born. Um, after the cloud of the cloud of heavenly angels were in, filled the sky, then they went back to heaven. And around that dark manger, there was a mother and a father. I don't know if they were worshiping or not. Maybe they were just trying to figure out what was happening. And then the shepherds came, rough probably smelly, and they worshipped the newborn king. We don't know how many shepherds there were, but they were worshipping 
to the highest name of all. And then sometime later, maybe up to two years, we know that wise men came from the east. And the Bible tells us that they bowed down, they worshipped him, and then they brought out gifts. And they knew some things, but there was so much that they still didn't know. But they responded to what they knew. But the Bible tells us one day that every knee shall bow, that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Everyone in heaven and on earth and under the earth, everyone, all will be revealed in the full glory of the Son. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess to the highest name of all, Jesus. Jesus. And we have such a privilege here this Christmas morning. We will do it then, but we can do it now. And Jesus, our coming King and the one who has come, we honor you this morning. We worship you this morning. And we say hallelujah with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our strength, with all of our might. Hallelujah. It's Christmas time, and today we're going to go to Bethlehem. Bethlehem was just six miles from Jerusalem, a very small village at the time that we're talking about. The prophet Micah had prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was born. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, are only a small village among the people of Judah, yet a ruler from Israel will come from you, one whose origins are from the distant past, or we might say from eternity. We all know that Mary came with her with Joseph to Bethlehem, and there Jesus was born and laid in a manger. The shepherds came and visited him. But I want us to go back way, way back, hundreds and hundreds of years before then, to Bethlehem that is first mentioned in the Bible. It was known as the home of David. David spent his childhood there. He shepherded his father's sheep, and he came often to the village of Bethlehem and drank from the well there. He loved the water from the well so much that later when King Saul was chasing him, trying to kill him, he cried out, oh, that I had a drink of water from the well at Bethlehem. And one of his fighting men risked his life to slip in and get a flask of water to take to David. David never forgot the years that he shepherded his father's sheep there in Bethlehem. Because in Bethlehem, when you looked out, you would see broad pastures that at times of the year were planted in barley. It was in a place of abundant harvests and places to shepherd your sheep. He would write, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not lack. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He was often in that area because it was his home. In the Bible, it speaks of several Beths. Bethel was the place where Jacob met with God. Bethesda was the place where Jesus healed a crippled man. Bethel means the house of God because Beth in the Old Testament means house. Bethesda meant the house of mercy. Jesus' mercy to a man who had given up hope meant hope for him. And now we come to Bethlehem. Bethlehem literally means the house 
of bread because in these fields where the sheep were pastured in at certain times of the year and where barley grew abundantly the rest of the year, there was so much grain to be gathered that it became known as the bread basket of Israel. And it was located in Judah. Judah means praise. So it is a place of abundant bread. It's a place of where the well was of fresh, cool water. And it's also the place where there is praise. That is Bethlehem. Now, in the ancient days, not too long after Israel entered the land of Israel, there was a man who lived in Bethlehem. His name, with his, with his wife, he, he lived there in Bethlehem with his wife Naomi and his two sons. But there was a famine in the land and the bread basket of Israel was going dry. There was no rain. There was no harvest, and it became very difficult to, to live there at that time. And so this man said to his wife, Naomi, I think we're going to go someplace else. It's not worth living here now. It's not abundant harvest. There's no rain. This isn't, this isn't, why should we praise the Lord when things are so bad? Let's move to Moab. Moab was a country not that far away, but there seemed to be rain and harvests in Moab. And Moab was descendant, a descendant of Lot. Now Lot was the nephew of Abraham. He was the one who chose the easy life. He wound up in Sodom. And the choice he made to go in that direction ruined his life. So this family moved down to Moab. Moab was a heathen country filled with idolatry. And when they came there, I'm sure they thought, we won't be here too long. The famine will be over and we'll go back. But the choices we make have consequences. And there, Naomi's husband died. And then the two sons that were the, with them took wives in Moab, Moab. It looked like they were going to settle down there. But then both of the sons died and Naomi was left a widow and her two daughters-in-law were left as widow. Then Naomi made a choice, a choice that would change her life forever and would change the history of a nation. She said, I'm going home. I'm going to go back to Bethlehem. I'm going to go back to the house of bread. I'm going to go back where there's a well of cool, clear water. I'm going to go back where my mouth will be filled with praise to God. And so she started back and her two daughters-in-law started back with her. She turned to them and she said, this is your home country. You have friends here. You're still young. You can remarry and settle down. Leave me here and I'll go back alone. One of the daughters-in-law named Ruth said, no, no, we'll go with you. And Orpha, the other one said, no, we'll go with you. But before long, Orpha decided to turn back. And she went back to her home in Moab. But Ruth said, and treat me not to leave you or to return from following you. For you, wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Something about Naomi's life, something about her worship of the one true God had touched Naomi's heart. And there, Naomi made a choice that forever changed her life and changed the history of a nation and in turn changed the history of a world. They came back to the house of bread.
to the house of praise, to the place where there was cool, clear water. And when they came back, Naomi's daughter-in-law, Ruth, realized, I'm a foreigner here. I'm, I'm not an Israelite. And how will I help to support my mother-in-law, Naomi? She's getting older. And she looked out and she said, it's the barley harvest. Perhaps I can work in the fields. But as a foreigner, she was not allowed to go in and harvest the rich grain. Foreigners had to stay behind. And they had to pick up the grain that was left behind the main harvesters. The work was hard. It was difficult because there wasn't that much to pick up. But she went and she worked hard in the field every day so that she could take to her mother-in-law. The owner of the field named Boaz happened to notice this young lady. He noticed that she was diligent in her work. He noticed that she worked faithfully and she didn't play around. She didn't notice the young men that were working there. And he thought, this is a good person. He began to ask the other workers, drop some grain on purpose, leave it on purpose so that she can get more grain. And the more he watched her, the more he realized this is a person of worth. It wasn't too long before Boaz asked Ruth to be his wife, and she accepted. Ruth, because she had made a choice to come, Naomi, because she had made a choice to come to Bethlehem. Ruth, because she had made a choice to come to Bethlehem, became the mother of Obed. Obed became the mother of Jesse. And Jesse gave birth. Jesse's son was David. David was the ancestor of Jesus. The choices we make will determine many things in our lives. You can't take away the consequences of the choice you make. We all know the choice that Mary made. Mary made a choice to believe the angel Gabriel, even though it made a difficult thing for her to decide. You see, when the angel came to Mary, Mary was just a young girl. The average age at which a girl in Israel married at that time was about 14. So she was very young. When the angel said, you're going to have a son, Mary was shocked. She was startled. And she said, how can this be? I'm not married. She thought, if I should have a son unmarried, I would be ruined forever. All, everyone would look at me and say, you're an unclean woman. But she chose to obey. And she said, be it unto me whatever the Lord desires. And later she made the journey 90 miles to Bethlehem. And the world has been changed forever. But I want to tell you about another woman who made a choice that changed my life. That was my mother. She was born in the late 1800s. She was very religious, but her religion was a dead religion. She thought that by being good and keeping all the rules of her church, perhaps she would please God enough that he would accept her. But it was a dead religion. It was empty. Her heart was hungry for reality. Her heart thirsted to know the true and living God. And one day, after she was married and already had three children, she and my father met a group of people who were so different. They were filled with joy. Out loud, they praised the Lord. They lifted their hands. Their hearts were full of of, of happiness and joy. They were so different. What, what was it about these people? They were born again. They had life. They had been spiritually to Bethlehem. And they had found that Jesus was the bread of life. Jesus 
could give living water to those who thirst, and Jesus could fill their hearts with praise. My mother, along with my father, accepted Jesus. And they were born again. They went to Bethlehem. The next year, I was born, the youngest of four children. And then, when I was still a tiny baby, my mother was sitting in a church service. It was all very new to her. And for the first time, she heard a missionary speak. The missionary happened to be from South China. And as my mother listened to this missionary speak, for the first time in her life, she heard Jesus' command, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the missionary challenged the people that were there. Who is there here tonight who will dedicate your life to be a missionary if God calls you? Oh, my mother's heart was so stirred. She wanted so much to go forward and dedicate her life, but she looked, she was holding me as a baby and she had the three other children. She knew she could never go. Nevertheless, she handed me into the arms of my older sister and she got up and followed the young people to the altar. And there she knelt and she made a decision that changed my life forever. She prayed, and this was her prayer. God, I want to go, but I know I'll never have the chance. But I have four children. God, take your pick. I dedicate whichever of my children you choose to be a missionary. She never told anyone about that prayer. The years passed. And once again, our family was in a missionary service. I don't know where the missionary was from. My mother was sitting close to the front and I was with a group of children on the other side. And again, the missionary challenged people. It said, he said, it's not an easy life. You'll have to go away from home and be gone for years at a time. But who will come and dedicate your life to be a missionary if God calls you. My mother was so happy to watch the young people coming forward and praise the Lord, her heart said. And then behind the young people came this little eight-year-old girl with long braids bobbing down her back. And she gasped, oh Lord, not my baby. And the Lord said, you said I could have any one of your children I chose. This is the one I chose. I never knew about my mother's prayer until the day that dad and I got on the boat in New York to sail to Singapore and later to come to Hong Kong and go to the Philippines and go to South America and go to Paris and Greece, go to Africa. My mother's decision changed my life forever. I think it probably changed Jen, Pastor Jennifer's life. And I hope in some way it may have touched and changed your lives. The decisions we make will influence not only our lives, but our children's lives and our grandchildren's lives. Come with me to Bethlehem today. Come to the house of bread. Come to the house where there is clear living water. Let God fill your heart with praise. The decision you make will change your life forever. God bless you. Hello brothers and sisters and young people of Lighthouse. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let 
earth receive her King. Merry Christmas, everyone. God bless you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hello, everybody in Night House. Uh, it's the end of the year again. Here we come with the Christmas, but this is not a very good Christmas for all of us. Um, we have a very hard time, especially for myself. My whole family is gone. Uh, this year I'll be very lonely uh, without my mother to argue with me. No, very, very lonely and quiet, but I'm very blessed that I have God. So I wish you all the best. Uh, in uh, 2021, there will be a new, new heaven and new earth. Uh, I wish you all the best and Merry Christmas to all. Bye. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year Lighthouse. We love you. Hi, this is Helen here, just saying Happy Christmas. Just showing you a few things that the children have put together. Well, this is a story they love that actually Glenda gave me before she moved back to the, um, back to, well, first of all, UK, and then now, as you all know, she's in um, Ireland. So God bless and Merry Christmas. And this is a beautiful Christmas tree. So I really enjoy putting the tinsel on. You can tell it's really special. So I'm just showing you a view of there, what they've been having, enjoying um, this story as well. And then I'll, I just want to show you um, through into one of the other rooms. And there's a beautiful wreath. And walk you through into my room to say a very Merry Christmas. I thought I'd say a very Merry Christmas from my two fish. My, well, the two little boys I look after, they're their fish actually, really. So, Merry Christmas everyone, God bless. Bye for now, bye. Hi, Lighthouse family. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Let shall be glad during this time. We should remember the birth of Jesus Christ. Happy, happy holiday. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas, Lighthouse! In this Christmas season, we wish everyone a Merry Christmas and peace and joy for the new year. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! Hello Linehouse, Merry Christmas, Jesus loves you. God bless. Hi, Lighthouse family. This is Brother Bona. My family and I just want to send to you all our warmest Christmas greetings. We pray that God will continue to protect us all. Remain all blessed. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, Lighthouse family. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy 2021 from our house. God bless. Merry Christmas, everyone! God bless you all! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Lighthouse! We miss you all! <laughs> Jesus was born for this reason and this reason alone. His birth means, as the rest of that that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Each of you were given the keys to heaven on the day Jesus was born. If you believe Jesus Christ's child was the only begotten son of God and the only reason he was born into, the, into this world was to take away your sins, then you are given the ultimate Christmas gift, life eternal. So on Christmas Day, we rejoice in the amazing birth of the Son of God. And we also rejoice in our salvation 
knowing that through his birth and sacrifice, we will join him and God in heaven for all eternity. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas, Lighthouse. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a blessed new year. God bless. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Glad tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas again, Lighthouse. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas celebration with us this morning. God bless you as you enjoy the rest of your day, either alone with a cup of coffee, with friends or with family. But it's been a wonderful time so far and we're looking forward to a good Christmas celebration for the rest of the day. God bless. <laughs>